Welcome everyone. This video is a part of the Puzzle Advent Calendar for 2023. It's a yearly collaboration before Christmas that showcases new puzzle designs by a bunch of different designers. There's a link to the playlist in the description, and if anyone's interested in participating next year, there's a link for that too. So here's my puzzle. This is the Photonic Crystal. It has two deeper than origin cut turns, like this. And each one has three-way symmetry, so that's one, two, three. And here it is viewed from the side. Oh, yeah, one, two, three. And then I'll show it not straight on because you won't be able to see it, but one, two, three. There. All right. So one way to look at this puzzle um, is that this is what happens if you take the cuts on a trapentrix and just make them deeper. Um, so this is a Trepentrix. Uh, it's a puzzle by uh, Timur Rivbatirov from a couple of years ago. And you can see, if you hold it like this, it actually has the same two three-way symmetry turns. Um, so one, two, three, and one, two, three. Another way to look at this is that it's kind of like a version of either a Radiolarian 9 or a Radiolarian 10, where you're only allowed to do moves next to a specific edge. So say we're looking at this edge. Um, then you'd only ever be able, or ever be allowed to do moves here along this cut and here along this cut. And from where we are right now, this extends all the way around like this, and this extends all the way around like this. Um, but if you keep allowing moves and opening up cuts to whatever's next to an edge, you get this pattern. Um, so, uh, and kind of going along with that, you can view this either as a deeper than origin cut puzzle like I showed, or you can just say, oh, hey, I have this little sliver edge piece here um, that I'm just going to follow follow around the puzzle and I'm only allowed to turn stuff that's, that's next to it. And so you can um, look at it like this so, and then let that move all around instead. You don't have to necessarily move it around the same style, it's just what I'm showing so that I can unscramble it easily. <laughs> All right, there you go. Back to the original state. So something cool about that too is that um, if you were to do kind of a similar cut restriction um, to a Radiolarian 11, that actually gets you back to the Trapentrix. Um, I don't have a Radiolarian 11 to demo that with, though, so. Um, and then also later, later radi Radiolarians also get you something equivalent to a Trapentrix, and you can actually do something kind of similar with earlier ones that doesn't work quite the same because the edge, the edge piece you need to work around isn't exposed. But a similar idea with the earlier Radiolarians also works, but those puzzles haven't been made yet, so. Um, the Photonic Crystal has equivalents to all the pieces on the Trapentrix. Um, so let me show you how that works. Um, so you've got this base piece here, and on the Trapentrix it's kind of hidden inside there. Um, and then you've got the face centers here, like these. Um, you've got the edges, so that's these, and then these. The grips are over here, so you can see it here, and you can see that. That's this big piece over here. Um, and then the petals, um, so you get these petals around here that are the same as these petals. Um, let's see. Oh, there we go. Um, all right. Um, and one of the interesting things about the uh, Trapentrix is that these petal pieces have restricted orbits that actually make it impossible for any algorithm um, to, to actually only cycle three of the petals. Um, so for the mathematicians among us, it's because the permutation group for the petals on the Trapentrix is a re three group um, instead of some kind of alternating group like you usually see on twisty puzzles. Um, and that makes the solution really difficult because um, normally we work with three cycles for, for solving stuff. Um, and ironically, in spite of the Trapentrix being so difficult for humans to solve using standard techniques, um, it can actually be solved without too much trouble uh, using a computer. Um, and, uh, the, uh, well, yeah, so it only has around half a billion different possible states, which sounds like a big number, but it's small and it's still small enough that you can brute force the solution with a computer. 
But on the other hand, adding even just a little bit of complexity to it uh, makes that practically impossible since the state space grows really quickly um, on increasingly complex puzzles. Um, so the Traheptrix by Oscar van Deventer is a good example of that, and a uh, similar idea should work for the Photonic Crystal as well. Um, I don't know the exact size of the state space for this one yet, uh, but it should be dramatically larger than for the Trapentrix. Um, and given that it includes these petal pieces um, that are or that behave in the same way as the one on, or as, as the ones on the Trapentrix, um, it already has at least some unusual group structure going on. Um, and I haven't verified yet, but I am curious to see if the new pieces here um, that are unique to this puzzle also have any unusual restrictions too. So there are a bunch of pieces on here that are equivalent to the Trapentrix, but then you also get these small star centers and these smaller petals as well that are unique to this puzzle. Um, I have no idea how to solve this one yet, and it's not clear whether or not it will require help from a computer. Um, the Trapentrix has a known solution that can be done by humans, but one of the algorithms in that solution was derived using a computer, so perhaps a similar kind of computational puzzle-solving approach can work here, too. Um, I'm curious to see what kinds of puzzles are and aren't solvable with traditional techniques, and to what extent computational searching strategies are needed for something like this. Uh, right now, I really don't know. I'm certainly interested in seeing what others have to say about how to solve stuff like this. Um, and... Uh, the the name um, the photonic crystal uh, name um, I figured out is just a hybrid of the names for the related puzzles. So the relate Radiolarian Nine was originally called the Radio Crystal, um, and I took the idea of a crystal from the Radio Crystal name and the idea of a trap from the Trapentrix name. And what can get trapped in a crystal? Well, light, I guess. So I'm calling this a photonic crystal, named after a cool thing that's going on in physics. Um, so, the shape I did for this was mainly just picked to make the faces flat. Um, because the cuts are slightly curved, the edges don't match up quite perfectly here, but it's plenty good enough. Um, and figuring out how to arrange the colors for the stickering was actually kind of difficult to decide, um, but I'm happy with the end result where I just have these bigger faces all grouped together, kind of like the colors on the Trapentrix, and then these small stars open up with new colors in between them. Um, the turning quality is surprisingly great, um, in spite of having this super sharp piece right here, as well as these kind of sharp petals, um, it actually doesn't catch that much. Um, I'd say it actually turns at least as well as my original Trapentrix, which is shocking, frankly. Um, I'm pleasantly surprised there. I printed this one on my modified Anycubic Cobra Neo with, um, I think it was either Overture PLA Plus or, uh, Duramic. Um, either way, both of those are great options and they're very similar. Um, also a huge thanks to my son and, or just for his help and encouragement with this project. Um, I really appreciate him lending enthusiasm to these things. So that's the Photonic Crystal. Thank you.